All right, all right, all right. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, good morning. Uh, my name is Ethan. Uh, I'm going to pass this over to Mr. Josh here very quickly. Hey, I did just want to let everybody know. Uh, thanks again for participating. Um, I do see uh, that we've had, you know, a hand raised. Everybody keep in mind, please, that we do have a Q&A box uh, that every, all the agents should be able to, uh, to ask questions, which we'll be stopping periodically to, uh, to answer some of those. Um, and without further ado, I'll hand it over to Mr. Josh Slattery. Josh, thanks so much, and uh, you're all set to go. Thanks, Ethan. Appreciate it. Good morning, everybody, and thanks for joining today's webinar. Today, I'm going to focus on Medicare marketing and just some good best practices that we want to share with you guys. I know we've got a variety of uh, agents on the call right now, some that have been in the business for many years, some that may be new to the business. And uh, for those of you that have been around for some time, you're going to find a lot of the information that we'll cover today, probably a, a review of things that you already know, some best practices that are already working for many of you out there. But for some of you that are new to the business, these might be some new ideas. Um, and you know, as you go through this, if you have any questions, as Ethan mentioned, feel free to put them in the chat. I want this to be interactive. I want us to be able to answer any questions you may have. And, you know, our team is really here to help you drive these strategies. We just don't want to put them up on a slide and expect that you're going to be able to just run with it. We would hope that you reach out to us and, and let us help you drive some of these results to give you, uh, you know, just a, a better strategy, a more productive strategy as you go out there and, and earn your business in the Medicare field. So my name is Josh Slattery. I'm the VP of Sales and Marketing here at the brokerage and you've got my contact information. Feel free to reach out to me directly if you need to at a later time. Um, the Brokerage Inc. is a national marketing organization. Uh, we operate in all 50 states. We're based here in Dallas, Texas. And as you can see on the screen here, we're proud of our brand new facility here in Flower Mound, which is just a suburb north of Texas. And we're doing all sorts of things like an open house coming up on May the 2nd. So feel free to, to join us. You'll also see invites for several upcoming trainings. So if you are here in the Dallas area, we, we look forward to welcoming you into our new home. Uh, we do operate um, in all 50 states, as I had mentioned, and service over 10,000 independent agents. And really our, our business is, is marketing for health and life agents. So anything we can do to help you Succeed in this business is really our mission, and we want to provide that local support to you. So we have team members scattered all throughout the country and parts of Texas and beyond um, that can help you drive some of the strategies that we'll, we'll talk about here today. So what do we really focus on? Uh, the, the four items that you see at the top here is Medicare Advantage, Medicare Supplement Plans, Part D Prescription, prescription Drug Plans, and then also Dual SNP, Dual Special Needs Plans. Uh, those are really our core products we focus on here at the brokerage, but we also deal with anything really that you can write with your life and health license, everything from final expense to uh, ACA products to ancillary cancer plans, standalone dental plans, hospital indemnity plans, and you can see the others there on the screen. We partner with many carriers. Uh, the largest carriers, of course, are going to be the ones we partner with most closely, and that's Groups like United Healthcare, Aetna, Humana, uh, Blue Cross, Blue Shield, Anthem, Cigna, Allwell, of course, AARP, which is a part of the United Healthcare umbrella. We work with local outfits as well, folks like Baylor, Scott & White, Caring Care, really anybody that does business in this Medicare Advantage or Medicare Supplement Part D prescription drug plan arena, we work with them in some form or fashion. Before I get into kind of the nuts and bolts of today's presentation, I just want to start off with a quick little story about a guy by the name of Takaru Kobayashi. And uh, you may recognize Takaru from what he's most famous for, which is the Coney Island hot dog eating competition that goes on every year. And this is a competition that's been going on for about 40 years plus. And when Takaru, a guy who was about five foot seven, probably not more than 150 pounds, won the Takaru, or the, uh, the the Coney Island hot dog eating competition several years ago, I think he surprised many people because not only did he beat the world record, but he actually doubled it. So going into this competition, he approached a competitive group of guys that basically had 
to this point, through 40 years of competing, had been able to eat uh, 25 hot dogs in 12 minutes. That was the world record at that time. And Takaru not only beat the world record, but he doubled it and he ate 50 hot dogs in 12 minutes. So you might ask yourself, you know, how does somebody come into a long standing competition and not only beat the world record, but double it? And the story really goes like this Takaru spent a lot of time um, studying how people were eating hot dogs in this competition. So you can imagine this, you know, somebody goes in and they're just eating a hot dog regular style, right? You can see there that it's a plate of hot dogs and they put the hot dog in the bun and down it goes. And, you know, the best they could do was, was 12 hot dogs, or excuse me, 25 hot dogs in 12 minutes. But Takaru really sat back and looked at it a little differently. Not, you know, how do I eat more hot dogs? In, 20, in 12 minutes, but how do I eat one hot dog faster? So he started looking at um, how he could take the hot dog out of the bun, break the hot dog in half, and then take the, the bun and actually dip it in water. And what that allowed him to do was eat the hot dog. And then as you know, the hot dog's going down, he's grabbing the bun full of water, squeezing all the water out, and then pushing it down his throat. So it goes down a little bit faster. And Albeit, I know this is kind of a disgusting story here for a 10 o'clock webinar, but really there's, there's, there's a message behind it. And um, Akaru spent so much time just evaluating his strategy, looking at, you know, drawing spreadsheets out, weight training, looking at how long he was sleeping. I mean, he took this very seriously. He had a defined method of going into this competition and through all of his analysis and finding out ways to eat the hot dog a little bit faster, like I mentioned, by defining kind of what was that, what was that missing gap? And it was, you know, taking away that traditional way that they were eating hot dogs and doing it more of a non-conventional way. Um, he really set himself apart. So it was a, a fascinating story to me because a guy like this goes into a competition and just completely destroys the previous record. And we can do that in the Medicare business too. A lot of what we do really isn't too complicated. Um, there's some strategies that work very well. But if you sit down and you spend some time looking at what strategies we're going to talk about today and what really resonates with you, um, what can you do maybe a little bit better than somebody else out there to set yourself apart from the competition? So I, I, I tell you this story to say that it's not impossible to double a world record you just sit down and put a little bit of thought into it, um, do things a little bit differently than what's being done out there, you can have a lot of success. So I always like to show this slide because depending on the group of people that we're talking to, it could be somebody that really is just brand new to the business and doesn't understand the fundamentals of what we do. And as you know, um, Medicare is not something that comes with out out-of-pocket expenses for the end user. Part A only covers a part of the hospital costs you have deductibles. Part B only covers a part of your medical and outpatient costs. There's a 20% coinsurance and a deductible. So how do people go about filling those gaps? Well, they really have two options. One option is to get a Medicare supplement plan with a Part D prescription drug plan. And as Many of you know very well that's your more expensive option, but gives you a lot of flexibility with providers. It helps you predetermine what your out-of-pocket costs are. It allows you to travel to other parts of the country and your coverage goes with you. There's a lot of benefits of a Medicare supplement plan and having Part D separately is filling the gaps within those A and B components of Medicare. But one of the more affordable options that's become very popular in the last several years is Medicare Advantage. And this allows you to get on a private insurance policy that combines all of your benefits into one. So all of your hospitalization, your medical benefits, and your Part D prescription drug benefits are packaged into one plan. They're typically at a $0 premium, but they can have a premium associated with them, not near as high as what a Medicare supplement would cost but still a, a, a small premium in some cases. And then you get additional benefits that aren't offered by A and B of Medicare. So you pick up things like a gym membership in some cases, a vision plan, a dental plan, over-the-counter benefits, 
several other benefits that aren't provided by original Medicare. So as folks that are out there representing different carriers, you need to know the differences in the Medicare supplement plans that are offered and the different Medicare Advantage plans that are offered. And really that's where you get started is understanding the market that you're in. Medicare Advantage, as I mentioned, has become extremely popular. And just looking at this chart keeps me motivated and, and happy that I'm in this business because we're in a business that is growing every single year. And right now, one out of every three Medicare beneficiaries chooses a Medicare Advantage plan nationwide. And you can see by this chart that that was one in four just a short time ago. And if you look back about a decade ago, that was really only one out of every six. So this program is becoming much more popular. CMS continues to put more funding behind these plans. It's what's keeping the lights on at the big health insurance companies. Medicare Advantage is really the driver of most of the growth that we're seeing right now in the Medicare business. Another thing that really makes me excited about our business and our growth over the next 10 years is this slide right here. And it talks about everybody that's turning 65 every single day. So you've got over 10,000 people right now that are turning 65 across this country, and that will go up to approach close to 11,000 by 2022 in its peak. And then it'll start to kind of shift back down to where in 2029, we'll be back at that 10,000 per day. But this is really a function of the baby boomers that are aging into Medicare, and that trend will continue for some time. And the average agent right now, believe it or not, is 59 years old. So if the average agent is 59 and over the next 10 years, you have more and more people turning 65, what does that tell you? It tells me that we don't have enough agents in our business. More and more are gonna be retiring over the next decade and that's gonna allow more and more people to come in as this population bubble is continuing to expand. So don't think that there's too many agents out there. There aren't. Uh, there's a lot of opportunity for everybody. And uh, as you're in this business, you know that this is really what's going to keep us moving forward over the next decade. So as you can see here, the national average across um, the, the country for Medicare Advantage penetration is 33%. Again, one out of every three person, people, excuse me, on Medicare are choosing a Medicare Advantage plan. And you can see like places like Texas right at the national average, places like Oklahoma are well below the national average at 18%. So if you're in Oklahoma, there's a lot of opportunity ahead. You may be sitting in a place like Florida or California where it's already up at 40, 42%. And the government has predicted that Medicare Advantage could see up to 50% penetration in the very near future as this program continues to really have a lot of tailwinds behind it and more and more funding coming in and more health insurance companies investing in it. So I, I think that you'll see there's a lot of opportunity even in some of those orange states. Let's talk a little bit about commissions because I know this is really what hits home for a lot of agencies. You know, I love being in the Medicare business, but you know, I, it's hard to really make a living in the beginning. And that's so true. This is not a get rich quick business, but it is a business that if you stick with it and you build up your renewals, it can earn you a very good income. And I just want to throw out some just basic numbers here. Um, in year one, you know, if you did 30 enrollments during annual enrollment period, and you did about six per month during SEP, so the remaining 11 months of the year, and you kind of had a cross-pollination of both new to Medicare business, which pays you the full commission of $482 for 2019, and then you had a, um, a blend of also those that you're converting from another MAPD plan or coming off of a MedSup and a PDP, you're going to be paid the renewal rate of 241. So obviously you're going to probably write more people that are converting than you are new to Medicare. So I've weighted that a little heavier in this example. And then you don't have any renewals coming in in year one. So 30 during AEP, six per month, your first year, you know, you're making somewhere around $34,000. But in year two, the benefit of our business, and one of the reasons that I love insurance so much, is that what business can you get in where you can sell something today and get paid for it next year? Um, and, and not only are you selling a product, but you're educating your consumers, you're helping people get on a plan, clear up confusion, 
And that's really what I feel a lot of you are probably passionate about is the fact that you help people. You're not truly really selling anything. You're helping people and guiding them into a plan that makes sense for them. I think that's a lot of what makes people feel good in our business. But not only that, you can continue to build your income year after year by building up that renewal stream. So you can see of the 100 people you wrote in year one, assuming about 10% of those are going to fall off. You're going to lose 10% of your book of business every year. Uh, and that's an average. But 90 of those folks you carry over into the following year, those same 90 people that you wrote back in year one are paying you close to $21,000 um, in renewals that first year. Then you had a, you know, 65 new to Medicare's that next year, and you wrote 85 that came off of a PDP or, or another MA plan. You can see that's 50 during AEP in year two and eight per month. You're up to close to $75,000. And then in year three, you're really starting to catch your stride. A lot of referrals coming in from your current book of business. You're working with providers. You've got community meetings set up. You're out in the community doing informal events you're really starting to pick up traction in that third year. And you've got 75 new to Medicare that you write that year and 100 that are converted. Plus you've carried over your renewals. Now you're making almost $50,000 a year in renewals. That's only 75 during AEP and nine per month. As many of you on this call know, that's a very reasonable target in your third year in the business. And now you're well into the six figures. Year four, things are starting to really take off even more. You're writing 100 new to Medicare and 125 that are coming from a conversion. That's 225 in your fourth year, 394 now in your book of business, almost hitting that six-figure mark just on your renewals, 100 during AEP, 12 a month. And then after that, in year five and on, you know, you're kind of just staying at that level, 100 during AEP and 14 per month, really starting to pick up some of that age in business. And, you know, as you can see, with about 600 clients in your book, you know, almost 150,000 just in renewal. So you can see that this grid can really start to take shape. Some are going to be below this. Some are going to be well beyond this. We have agents all across the country that are well beyond 600 in their book of business, well into the thousands. And, and that's very reasonable, especially with the data I showed you earlier with how many people are turning 65, the baby boomer population continuing to grow. And, you know, there's a lot of opportunity out there. One of the first things you want to do is you want to understand the market that you serve. And this is an example of DFW. This is where our home base is, but we can pull this type of data for you for any market that you service. And it's important to know what is that penetration rate in the county that you service? What is the breakdown of Hispanic, non-Hispanic, African-American, Medicaid eligibles? You know, really understanding you know, what type of consumer you're marketing towards. Are you marketing towards a low income consumer, a high income consumer? Are you talking to somebody that's a certain ethnicity, has language barriers? What's really going to resonate with that clientele? How do you really target that group? And then also understanding the growth. You know, this area here uh, in Texas is seeing 8% eligible growth every year. You can see that there's about, you know, in places like Dallas County and Tarrant County, there's a very high penetration rate, meaning Medicare Advantage is very popular in places like Dallas, Johnson, Tarrant County. There may be some opportunities, though, here in places like Kaufman County and Rockwall County. Those aren't really heavily populated areas, but you can see here that the participation rate isn't quite as high. That could present an opportunity for you. You can see that if you're going to go to Rockwall, this is a, a mostly going to be a Caucasian area. So you want to identify the types of marketing materials to, to target that particular segment. But let's say you want to do something in Dallas. You can see that Dallas is going to be a little bit more heavier on the Hispanic and the African-American population. So you might want to look for what type of marketing materials are going to resonate with that population? What sort of retail venues do those type of consumers shop at? Those are the kind of things you want to look at to really hone in on your strategy. You can see that if you want to target the Medicaid population, you want to be in places like Dallas County or Kaufman County or Tarrant County. And we can hone down even further into the zip codes so you know exactly what type of marketing material or what type of activities are going to really resonate with that 
that type of ethnicity and that type of market. You also want to know who are the big players? What carriers are really carrying most of the market share? And when you look at just Dallas County specifically here, at the top, you can see United Healthcare is very dominant here. They've got 54,430 members just in Dallas County alone. The next closest competitor would be Humana um, at 17,000. And then after that, you've got CHA, which is a subsidiary of Humana. So you've got the Humana PPO in number two position, and then the Humana HMO in the third position. So Humana's got about 25% of the combined market share there in Dallas County. So if you're going to market in Dallas County, you need a Humana contract, you need a United contract for sure. You can also see that WellCare has a little bit of a, of a market share here, about 7,800 members. And then Aetna has a PPO and an HMO combined. They're going to be a little bit larger than WellCare, almost 10,000 members here in Dallas County alone. Um, you get down or further on this list and you see some others that we've talked about. Heron Care is listed there, Health Springs listed there. Um, probably not as important that you have those carriers, but for sure at the top you want United, Humana, and Aetna. Heron County is really not a whole lot different. Heron County, you've got United Healthcare again leading the pack, Humana up there, but also Karen Care here. So you can see if you're in Tarrant County, Karen Care is going to be very important for you because they do have a lot of market share there. So when you go from county to county, even though it's all in one area, the plan uh, market share can change. But we can pull this type of data for any sort of area that you service. If you want to know who are the top uh, carriers in that area, we can certainly help you get that information. The next piece is you really want to know the benefits. You've got to know what types of plans are available in the area you service. So United Healthcare here has a plan one and a plan two that services Dallas, Fort Worth. And you can see the different benefits. One's premium based, one is not. Um, the richer benefits are gonna be on the higher premium plan. You can see it's only $150 for an admin into the hospital where you pay 275 a day, days one through five, if you're on the zero premium option. So understanding you know, the different types of plans, which counties they're offered in, what are those extra benefits, um, what does the drug plan look like? These are all things that you really need to know very well when you're working in the market. Humana also has a good portfolio here. You can see that they've got some zero premium HMOs. Also, they've got a $15 PPO. Uh, they've got a local PPO that's a little bit higher in premium, but a very, very broad um, selection of plans here in the Dallas-Fort Worth area from Humana. No different from Aetna. Aetna actually has a unique plan here where they offer $104 Part B give back. So you actually get money back um, on your, on your uh, Part B premium. And you can see that that's a PPO plan, which is pretty rare that you have a PPO in a market that also has a give back. But you can see the star ratings are listed here. Most of those are four stars. Aetna has done a very good job of maintaining high star ratings, which is a high quality and, and um, a lot of positive feedback from their consumer base. Also, you can see that there's um, prescription drug copays and so forth listed here. Uh, there's always going to be some different nuances between plans and the, the tiers that their drugs are ranked at. So you want to take a close look at that because that really impacts your consumer base. Um, every single month with prescription drug costs. Care and Care has a very good plan here, $0 premium with a $3,400 move. Their drug plan is actually priced very well. Um, we've seen a lot of growth with Care and Care this last year. Uh, their PPO does very well. Also, as I mentioned earlier, they very strong in the Tarrant County region. They have a great relationship there with NTSP and the physician groups, so they tend to perform very well where those clinics are. Um, situated here in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. If you're going to work the DSNIP market, it's a little bit more of a unique market. And we've got webinars that are being hosted by Yvette Rodney, who is our DSNIP consultant and manager in the Houston market. But she really dives into some strategies that help you in the DSNIP area. She's always available to help you as, as well as our other marketers on how you can grow your DSNIP book. But one thing that's unique right now about the DSNIP market is that the penetration compared to Medicare Advantage is very low, where you have one out of every three 
Medicare beneficiaries and Medicare Advantage on a plan, your penetration with uh, DSNP is significantly lower. You can see that 27% um, here in Texas, and that's just on um, the DSNP plans that are available in the counties you see highlighted. There's going to be a lot of areas where there's not even a DSNP plan offered, so a lot of expansion in the near future. But a lot of eligibles here in Texas, um, there's close to 600,000 alone just in the state of Texas. Those plans um, offer very rich benefits when it comes to things like dental. This plan has $2,000 that covers all of your comprehensive care, including things like crowns and extractions, um, not to mention the preventative care that's covered at a zero cost. They also come with things usually like transportation, OTC benefits, over-the-counter benefits. This one has $175 per quarter. Also very rich benefits on things like vision and hearing. Um, you get a $2,000 allowance towards hearing devices, and then you also get a $200 credit towards eyewear. So these are very, very rich plans uh, when it comes to benefits. You just have to keep a close eye on network and things like home health care and um, durable medical equipment. Some of those things that you may not run across as frequently on the Medicare Advantage side, but when you look at dual special needs plans, a lot of times they have a lot of care, psychologists, psychiatrists, things like that that you really have to sit down and look at all their physicians and really hold their hand through the first 60, 90 days so that they understand how to obtain these extra benefits because when they go to the doctor or the hospital, they're, they're not paying anything anyway. So hey, let's hey, go Josh. Yes. Hey, so sorry to jump in there. We had a really good question here. Yeah. Um, you know, maybe an agent that hasn't, you know, written or, or looked into the market. Can you just kind of break down what exactly uh, is the DSNIP market? Yeah, so the DSNIP market is going to be those that are eligible for both Medicare and Medicaid. So with a traditional Medicare Advantage plan, you have three requirements, and that's that you have Part A and B of Medicare, that you live in the plan service area, which would be those counties that are defined, and then you that you continue to pay your Part B premium. When we look at a DSNP plan, you still have to, to meet those three requirements, but the one caveat is, is that you have Medicaid, and there's different levels of Medicaid, but what we're typically looking for is somebody that has QMB. That's going to be the highest level of Medicaid. It's going to pick up their Part B premium, but it's also going to fill those gaps. So when they have both Medicare and Medicaid, that's when they would qualify for a dual special needs plans. From a marketing perspective, these are going to be individuals that are typically making less than $15,000 per year. So when you're targeting this type of individual, you're going to filter your household income down by $15,000, and that's the population you're going to look at, $15,000 and under. So hopefully that answers your question. If, if I can clarify further, just, just let us know. Ethan, were there any other questions that came in the chat? Uh, not this time, but I'll keep my eye out. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay, so next here we'll look at the marketing approach that we really outlined for all agents. And you know, we, we feel like most agents are going to gravitate towards one or two strategies that they really, really like. But this kind of gives you just a, a holistic approach of what we're going to cover today. So we'll break this down into, into six categories. And one is sales events. So we'll talk a little bit today about formal sales events. These are meetings where you're giving a presentation to a group of people. You can do them in restaurants, hotels, libraries, civic centers, your um, agency office. There's all sorts of different locations that we hold sales events at across the country. These are really popular during AEP because that's when everybody can make a change and they're typically out there shopping and we'll see higher um, attendance during that time. The carriers also support community meetings and sales events during AEP. So it's a great opportunity for you to leverage some of that um, marketing opportunity that's out there. Uh, the second thing is going to be community-based marketing. And this is more of informal type of events where you're setting up a table and you're visiting with people in an area. These are really popular in places like senior residences, um, going out to food banks, working with local churches and synagogues and mosques, um, working with local events, maybe you go to a 5K or to a health fair or to a home and garden show. This is really being out in the community, 
and working inside of a location that already has foot traffic and you're just there to pick up and leverage that traffic and talk about health insurance. It's a popular topic out there. If you have a table set up, people will come by and ask questions. And there's really a method to the madness on how you get people to your table. Um, another type of community event is just educational events. This is really where we don't sell any type of product out there. We're just promoting um, the educational side of Medicare. There's a lot of confusion out there. People that are coming into Medicare for the very first time don't know how the program works. It's very um, intimidating at first. You get a lot of mail in your mailbox, don't know what to do. Um, so we do educational events and we talk about the ABCs of Medicare and we'll dive into that specific strategy as well. The third is targeted BRC direct mail campaigns. These are called business reply cards. Um, we've got a robust program here at the brokerage where we can help you do direct mail and many different types of, 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 of materials. But one that's very popular is the BRCs and we'll dive into some of that and how that works here shortly. Um, retail is number four. Uh, Walmart is a very popular retail program that we participate in. We're right now looking at um, the first round of Walmart stores. So if you are interested in working at Walmart, please reach out uh, to Jamie Gaskell. She manages that program in our office. If you don't know who Jamie is, just call the main line for the brokerage and ask for Jamie and you'll get patched over to her. You can also talk to your local marketing representative if you already work with somebody about options for Walmart. Um, we deal with other programs as well. We have a great partnership with HEB here in the Texas area and uh, also the carriers uh, work closely with places like CVS and Walgreens. Um, but you can, you can also go and explore your own type of retail um, opportunities with standalone independent grocery stores and pharmacies and different types of retail and we'll visit about that as well in the presentation here this morning. On the, the fifth one will be provider marketing. So provider marketing is working closely with physicians. Um, we're very fortunate to be able to work closely with big provider groups. You know, just to name a couple, you've got groups like WellMed and NTSP. Um, you have Gonzaba and Health Texas. There's all sorts of different groups out there, but also working with just individual physicians particularly primary care physicians are the ones that drive a lot of activity for agents. They get questions all the time about Medicare. They don't necessarily want to answer those questions. They'd like to have somebody that they can kind of punt those questions to and working with a local insurance agent is always a great opportunity for you to partner with a physician group, do meetings around their office, work with folks that are turning 65. Um, help them, you know, put signage up in their offices about the different plans that they participate in. So there's a lot of opportunities with providers and we'll visit about some of that as well. And then, you know, lastly is partnering closely with the carriers. The carriers do a ton of marketing out there. Um, you know, if you see it, that the top carriers in your market are folks like United, Humana, Aetna, Karen Care, Scott & White, you know, Amerigroup, those, those are folks that you want to get to know they do have lead programs. They can help support you with training. Um, they can present different types of opportunities that will benefit you and help you grow um, as you develop in the business. So without um, any further ado, I'll go ahead and kind of jump into those specific topics. And one thing that we do here at the brokerage is we help you fund these types of opportunities. Um, if you are producing eight enrollments per month through the brokerage, that opens up a door for you to get $450 towards marketing efforts. And those eight enrollments don't all have to be any specific product category. You can be writing Medicare Advantage, Medicare supplements, um, ancillary products. If you package your Medicare Advantage with a hospital indemnity or a cancer plan, that would be two enrollments that would be applied towards this incentive. You can write ACA products, final expense, life insurance, any sort of plan that you can write with your life and health license and you have contracted through the brokerage um, would be considered a, a part of this. The only thing we do exclude would be prescription drug plans. Um, and then there are some standalone dental plans that we don't 
um, accept through this program as well. But generally speaking, pretty much everything you write can, can be used. That $450 per month can go towards a thousand piece mailer, um, or it can go through something that you do out in the community, or if you want to buy um, an electronic device to help you with electronic enrollments or to manage your business, we do approve one of those per year, iPads, laptops, things of that nature. You can use it towards radio ads, newspapers, um, any sort of retail event. So we're very flexible as long as the $450 is applied towards marketing, we can pay that vendor directly. Um, and so I encourage you all to, to take advantage of this program. This is really a way for you to allow us to help invest in some of these opportunities for you. So let's start off just talking about turning 65 educational events. Uh, there's a lot of different material out there, whether you look for materials that are promoting a specific carrier, or if you'd like to do something that's more generic in nature, uh, we have all sorts of different marketing materials that we can use to promote these events. But this is an event where you would just be looking to get in front of people that are turning 65 and talk to them about the basics of Medicare. You're not going to go into any sort of product information. You're really just going to outline what is Part A, what is Part B, what is a Medicare supplement, what is a Medicare Advantage plan, how do you enroll in these types of plans, do you have to enroll when you turn 65 if you're still working you know these are all questions that come up that people are very confused about we host these meetings at libraries or restaurants you can serve food at educational events um, so it's a way to promote these is by coming in for um, a breakfast or a lunch learn about medicare um, you can promote these through direct mail with the pieces that you see here we've also had agents that are interested in promoting these through different types of digital marketing, whether it be through Facebook or through email or through you know, any type of social media. There's several different ways you can promote these. You can promote them at doctor's offices. You can promote them at senior residential facilities. There's flyers that you can leave behind. Uh, so this is a very productive way of building a pipeline for many agents. Um, we've learned through doing these that not only turning 65 prospects are looking for this type of information, but also those that may be over the age of 65 and approaching retirement. Um, those that are 67 are typically still working and want to get the maximum benefit out of their Social Security, so they wait until they turn 67 or even 68 to maximize that Social Security benefit. A lot of them have a spouse that is still working um, and not yet 65. So to keep them on a group plan, they continue working into their late 60s. So we have found that when you market folks that are 66, 67, and 68, you can actually get a very good um, return on these pieces, and we can help you put these together and market these. Um, this is a program that is offered through your brokerage book. So if you are doing eight a month and you want to set up some type of meeting like this, we'll pay for it. Um, if you're not hitting eight a month and you want to set something up like this, perhaps you can make an initial investment and that'll get you up to the eight a month to where we will be able to help you with that cost. So there's also carriers that will help you partner, medical groups that'll help partner. So there's different ways that you can kind of get around a strategy like this and get it off the ground. Um, another way that you can promote these meetings is by having a doctor come out and speak at your meetings. There's a lot of providers that are looking to grow their panel, whether it be through just a standalone physician or through a big group like WellMed. Um, they are big proponents of turning 65 meetings, and if you can get a good audience, um, the doctor will come out and speak, and that helps you build a relationship with that physician, grow their practice, but at the same time, add some credibility to your presentation. They come out, they talk about things like health and wellness. Um, healthy eating habits. Those are things that are really going to help promote your meeting. And when somebody's getting five or six invitations to turning 65 meetings out there, what's going to differentiate yours? Well, you have a doctor coming out and speaking at yours. I would probably choose that one over another one if there was no physician at a, a, a meeting that was also close by. When it comes to pulling the data for these um, types of meetings. You actually have all this at your fingertips. Um, there's a million different sites out there, but one that we, uh, we like to use is called InfoUSA. Um, you can drop a, a radius um, around your meeting location, and you could do a five or ten mile radius around that meeting location and find everybody that's turning 65 within the next six months 
and you can pull that data right here off of Info USA and then get one of those postcards and promote your meeting that way. Um, we have a preferred rate through Info USA of three cents per record, so the data is fairly inexpensive. Um, and then you can also just filter by zip code or by city or by county. So there's millions of different ways here to pull that data based on the, uh, the, the geographic area that you want to explore. Um, you can select a state and a county, or like I said earlier, just use the, uh, the radius around your meeting. You can filter by age. So if you wanted to target somebody that was from 65 through 68, so you can target those um, folks that are approaching retirement. You can filter down by household income. We think the sweet spot for Medicare Advantage is somewhere between 20,000 and 60,000 in household income. You wanna target folks that are gonna be more of a candidate for a Medicare supplement, then you can look to go up from that 60,000 to $100,000 range. Um, again, you can search by um, marital status, ginger. There, there's all sorts of different filters. Um, there's even sites that allow you to, to drive down by ethnicity if you wanna do a Spanish speaking meeting or target a specific ethnicity for your Turning 65 campaign. Those are filters that we can help apply as well. Um, next, I'll move here to community meetings. And community meetings are, like I mentioned earlier, very popular during annual enrollment period. Um, carrier branded pieces are usually the way that we prefer to promote them. You can see here that Aetna, United, Humana all have marketing materials that support community meetings. Um, it's important that you wanna try to put as many meetings on one card as possible. So we always promote that you do a meeting at the same time and the same day of the week. So for example, you're gonna do a meeting every Tuesday at the Golden Corral or at the Coulter's Barbecue, wherever you choose to do your meeting, keep it consistent. Uh, that way people know that you're gonna be there at that time and that that day and then you can also maximize your advertising space on these postcards. The carriers will also promote these a lot of times through their own direct mail. They also use newspaper and um, TV ads. A lot of that will drive attendance into your meetings. But here at the brokerage, if you're doing community meetings, we wanna help support you. We feel that this is a great way to generate business. If you do file meetings during annual enrollment period, let us know. We will help get postcards out for you at no cost to you. We kind of bake that into our marketing campaigns every year. Um, we feel that this is a great way for consumers to shop. They don't always want an in-home appointment and community meetings work very, very well uh, for agents that will spend the time to get out there, find a good location. You want to be in a meeting room where people can hear you. So you don't want to be at the IHOP, you know, right next to the um, entrance to the kitchen where there's going to be dishes clanking around all the time um, or a lot of people sitting by you. You really want that consumer to be able to understand you. So find a room that has um, a quiet space for you to do your presentation, um, accommodates folks, you know, where there's tables that are available for them to sit at and you know you have um, a comfortable location for them to come hear about Medicare options. We also promote that you do multiple carriers at one location. So you may do a United Healthcare meeting at 11 o'clock, followed up by an Aetna meeting at one o'clock. You're gonna pay for that room, maximize it. Maximize your advertising efforts from the carrier so you really get a good bang for your time um, when you're doing these meetings. You've gotta promote these meetings on your own as well. So going around and working with doctors and letting them know where your meetings are located, um, working with senior residences, these are important things that you need to mention about community meetings. Second or Third, I'll talk about uh, silver sneakers um, or often fitness events. So you'll find that also Silver and Fit is a popular program out there, but these are great opportunities for you to visit a 24-hour fitness or an LA fitness or a YMCA. Find out when their silver sneakers meetings are and let them know that you can come in and that you can talk about Medicare and just educate these people on the fact that they can change plans during open enrollment um, every year. Talk to them about you know, the, the LIS opportunity that they can save costs on their prescription drugs. You can buy these water labels right off of the United Healthcare Toolkit and you can 
put your name and phone number on them and give out bottled water. This is a great opportunity for you to spend 30 minutes um, going into a silver sneakers event and just getting in front of perhaps, you know, 15 to 20 people that are there that may not be happy with their plan. Um, they, not, they may not know a local agent. This is an opportunity for you to get out there and get some exposure. And these are the easiest events to set up. You can walk into five gyms today and have these set up in no time. Um, and then just print off some flyers, have them available, get your um, table and your uh, tablecloth, set it up right there in front of the entrance to the Silver Sneakers venue and start passing out waters. Um, give a little five minute talk at the beginning of the, of the Silver Sneakers event. Heck, you may even be able to do a little bit of exercise while you're there. So these are great opportunities to get in front of folks. Dental and provider offices. Dental offices um, are becoming a very lucrative source of referrals for many agents out there. We have seen a lot of agents embrace this um, in addition to provider offices, but there's a lot of materials out there. United Healthcare has probably the most on the toolkit. Everything from hand sanitizer units that you can leave at provider offices to pull up banners that promote the dental benefits to flyers that you can leave behind with acrylic stands that will hold your business cards and promote your local meetings in the area. Um, provider offices are a great source, but you've got to build that relationship. You've got to spend time going into these offices, building credibility. When you have a new patient that you assign to a new dental office or a new provider office, call them, let them know. I just signed up Mrs. Smith and she is going to be coming in for a routine cleaning and an x-ray next month. I would like to go ahead and schedule her appointment. She's going to be coming in for um, a wellness checkup next month. She's a new patient. So the more they see that you're helping them, they're going to be willing to help you. So take advantage of that reciprocity. Once you build that relationship, there's some very good resources out there that you can utilize. There's letters that are CMS approved that providers can send out to their patients. They can have your name and phone number listed on them. These are CMS approved that you have access to. Um, you can talk to your provider offices about sending these out. Um, again, they can have your name and phone number. This is one just explaining to um, patients that this doctor is now affiliated with a new carrier. So they can send that out. And uh, this would be United Healthcare in this example that they're going to begin taking United Healthcare Medicare Advantage plan. Um, you can also have them send out letters every month to people turning 65. The open rate for provider um, based mail, if the letter comes from their doctor, they are likely going to open it. So if there's something in there saying, hey, congratulations, you're turning 65, we want you to learn about the options you have for Medicare plans then this is a, a meeting that you can set up with your provider office so that people turning 65 can come and learn about the plans that that provider accepts. And it's an educational meeting at this time and this day. These work very, very well. Um, if you're fortunate enough to get into an opportunity where a provider is dropping an insurance carrier and they need to uh, um, provide their, their patients with another alternative, this would be a, a, a great letter to have your name and phone number on. Um, out there in the community. So this is another CMS approved template that you can use. Moving on to retail opportunities. I spoke to you a little bit about Walmart and HEB earlier. Also mentioned that there's some um, standalone places like Fiesta or even just, you know, mom and pop type grocery stores out there, uh, pharmacies that are out there that are mom and pop, um, anything where you have foot traffic coming in these are great opportunities for you to set up. Walmart um, is, is always going to be a good opportunity if you can get in the right store, not promising that every store is going to be a home run. We have some stores where agents write hundreds of enrollments. We have some stores where agents, you know, don't even write more than in the single digit. So a lot of it is depending on that location and, and your engagement, you know, the willingness of, of you to be there um, on a regular basis and um, you know, have that smiling face so people can approach you. You can't just sit there and approach them in a retail environment. You have to have something that pulls them over to your table. You can see here that the spinning wheel, you know, giving away some items or showing them the over-the-counter benefit items in the, the, the little shadow box that you see there. These are ways that you can draw people to your table. The better your table is set up, um, the more likely you're going to have somebody approach you. So you see, ask me about questions regarding Medicare. These are things that are important when it's a retail environment that you have your table set up appropriately 
that you're there with a friendly appearance. You're not sitting there on your phone um, eating donuts. You know, that's not a, an approachable agent. You need somebody that's going to be there and really willing to engage with the folks that are walking by. That's how you capitalize on that opportunity. We really big, big believers in retail. We feel like this is a great opportunity for agents to sit in a location where there is foot traffic and benefit um, during AEP. But we also see these really popular during SEP as well, especially with the dual special needs clients. You can see here that um, there's a Fiesta store that has a check cashing location. This was a great location um, down in the Houston area where agents would set up in those first few days of the month. Why is that? because that's when low income consumers are getting their, their disability checks or their social security checks. They're going in to cash them and then pick up some groceries. Great opportunity for you to be there and talk to them about also picking up some additional dental benefits or uh, other health plan benefits that are available to them. If you have an agency office, um, we love the fact that there's some agencies here that promote their health insurance um, carriers of choice on their windows or outside of their brick and mortar locations. Um, you can't just put a sign outside and expect that people are going to come in, but this is a very popular way. Uh, if you do have an office and you want to get some signage out there, the carriers will help put window clings up, feather flags, um, sh um, different sandwich boards, a lot of different um, options there for you. Local events is another thing that we feel work very well for agents. This is a picture of the Home and Garden Show uh, down in the Corpus Christi market. And this has always been a good event for, for an agency down there. Um, but these go on in every major market. Uh, there's also places like the Goodwill that you can see here that do senior days. So you can set up a table at a Goodwill on senior day and um, capture some of those individuals that are coming in. But other than this, you've got places um, all around, not only you know places like uh, the, the home and garden show and the goodwill, but flea markets, um, different types of, you know, I mentioned 5Ks earlier, any kind of events that you have where you know you're going to get a big draw of people. Those are events where there's going to be seniors there. Um, there's going to be people that make decisions for seniors as well. So take advantage of those. Um, mall kiosks. So this would be a, an opportunity for you to set up a mall kiosk. Uh, we, we promote these uh, generally during AEP. Um, for, you know, a three-month stint, October, November, December. Uh, the, the rent on these could be anywhere from 1000 to 5000 a month, depending on the mall, depending on the location. But if you set these up right, and you can see here United Healthcare has a lot of signage, but every carrier that you partner with could help you outfit a kiosk. And these are great opportunities if you um, find a mall that's very, you know, concentrated with seniors, is in a type of demographic that you want to service these have proven to be successful if the location is picked um, correctly. You definitely don't want to be in a high-end mall next to, you know, the Saks Fifth Avenue, but if you're by the Santa Claus or by, you know, a, a, a department store that's typically heavily um, focused on seniors, I would say like a JCPenney, um, a Macy's, something like that, then you're going to get good foot traffic and that's certainly going to help you um, during AEP. Senior residences is a very popular option for a lot of agents. These are going to be things like bingos and birthday celebrations. There's all sorts of marketing materials you can um, purchase for, for these types of events, but these are available to you at no cost on the agent toolkit for United Healthcare. You can go back over to Info USA. You can look at that, you know, Rosemont Senior Living Facility and what are all the addresses within that facility? How do I send out a flyer promoting my bingo or my birthday celebration. Not to mention you can go to these senior residences, talk to the event planner. They're constantly looking for people to come in and do these types of events. Um, the seniors love to come in and eat some ice cream and cake and celebrate all the birthdays. And meanwhile, you're there talking about Medicare, building up that pipeline, telling about opportunities for them to save on prescription drugs and capture new benefits. You want to do a bingo. That's another you know, great way. We do arts and crafts. Um, we just set up tables sometimes at, you know, some of their um, larger events throughout the year. So there's, there's all sorts of opportunities for you to partner with senior residences. Um, we also are a big fan of the over-the-counter catalog parties. This is an opportunity for you to go in where you, where you have members or where you know that there's a lot of 
um, dual special needs clients and you can help them order their catalog items right there at, a, at their location. You can promote this um, same way we did with the senior residential um, facilities and doing a bingo or a, um, or, or a arts and crafts event. You just send out a flyer to come join us for uh, an over-the-counter catalog event and a lot of people aren't going to have the the benefits they're going to want to know how they do get the benefits and that's where you come in and can talk to them about the plans that are available in the area you notice that a lot of these events require that you have promo items and how do you get those promo items united healthcare offers promotional items on their um, jarvis website you can see here through the sales and marketing tool you just go down to promo items um, you click on that link and it's going to open up places where you can order tablecloths and giveaways and we keep a lot of this stuff on stock here. So if you need help getting some of these items, let us know. We'll help um, provide these to you. You can also use your brokerage bucks to order things like this. They work well at places like churches and synagogues and mosques also. So if during AEP you want to work with your church or a church that's in your community or you're um, affiliated with a synagogue or a mosque, these are a great way to just get a group of people together, talk about plans. Um, you can promote these just like you would one of your community meetings, um, just through the congregation, possibly get a list of the individuals that um, are participating in that church or that synagogue, and, and you can mail that out to them. We love food banks. Food banks are an opportunity for you to set up a table, um, help the community. You know, you're going to be walking items to people's car but at the same time talking to them about what kind of benefits they have, a lot of dual special needs opportunities at places like this, but you also have some folks that are just on LIS. Um, we find that there's food banks going on every single week across every single major city in the US. So if you just Google food banks, there's no shortage of them out there and they always need volunteers. They always wanna partner with someone that can help add more value to their, um, their participants of the food bank. Direct mail is, is another thing we talked about earlier, but you know, if you do carrier branded mail, those work very well. You can use your brokerage bucks, whether it be through Aetna, United Healthcare, Humana, they all have different branded opportunities. You can select the product that you wanna target. Um, you can promote your community meetings, but you can also do generic mail. So there's things here that you see like a, a dual um, generic piece that has a BRC attached to it. These BRCs will come back in a lead dashboard and you'll have access to call and reach out and help these individuals with the information that they were looking to get um, more educated on. So here they want more information on the Part B premium savings offered through the Medicare Savings Program and how that can help them save money on their prescription drug. So this is a great conversation to have with somebody that's interested. Maybe they want information on dental vision and hearing. You can send out a business reply card. And we have catalogs with all sorts of different BRCs. These are going to be our highest returning pieces here, these three. They're going to average anywhere between, I'd say, a percentage and a half to about 3%. Your leads will show up on this dashboard here. And then we also have preset appointments that we can do for you through our call center. Um, so th these will work basically as our call center goes through and calls on some of the leads that you've determined are exhausted. You can't get a hold of them. They can try to set up a preset appointment so you can go out and visit with them. Um, lots of those that we do throughout the year. So lastly here, you know, as we wrap up the, the call, I'll just kind of walk real quickly through the toolkit so you can kind of see, you know, how do you get some of these items in these flyers I've been talking about today? You can get pull-up banners on the toolkit at no cost. They can be personalized with your name and phone number. You can get all these flyers, whether they be generic or branded, on the toolkit. There's also availability through the studio with Aetna to pull up um, similar information. You can drive down to events or you know member meetings or however you want to do um, you know or, or target your audience you can kind of filter that by language through the toolkit by material type um, so much information available to you here you can order sandwich boards that are personalized you can get postcards that are personalized you can get member meeting information that's personalized for you if you want to do a, a pre-AEP or a post-AEP member meeting um, we also encourage that you manage your book of business through agency block. We do offer a promotional price of $39.99 if you want to subscribe to agency block. This helps you manage your membership, be able to send out an email promoting a member meeting to all of your members. Um, due, to, due to time constraints, I'm not going to go through um, Connecture or any of the, uh, the, the technology components of the presentation here today. 
but we sure do appreciate your time. Um, if there's anything else that you know I can answer in terms of questions for you today, I'll, I'll open it back up to uh, to Ethan um, on the chat here. But I just wanted to say thank you so much um, for your time, and uh, we, we we value your business and hope that this was helpful for you here today. Thanks so much. Hey, and thank you so much, Josh. Really appreciate it. Hey, we just have one question here. Um, any sample letters that can be used for uh, employee groups that have employees that are turning 65? Do you know if we have any marketing on that? Um, we don't have anything in particular that, that targets um, employer groups. Now, I know that United Healthcare does have some stuff out on their toolkit, but we could certainly help um, craft something that would be useful. Uh, we do work with a couple different marketing companies that could help us put something together. So we would just want to understand more of, you know, what that message would be. And we could certainly help piece that together. Perfect. Well, that's all I have on my end, sir. Thanks so much for your time. Hey, appreciate it, guys. Thank you so much.